I've brought you here to Nairobi, Kenya, a vibrant, teeming city of six and a half million, because it's the perfect case study for the issue we're looking at, how to empower youth towards better futures. My goal is to gain enough of an understanding of this complex issue that I can choose which approach I might eventually want to support. I'm not ready to select a specific charity to fund, but I'm going to meet with organizations and youths to understand the challenges they face. Kenya has a population of nearly 50 million. High fertility rates 30 years ago mean that today, 80% of the population is under the age of 35. Each year, 800,000 young people enter the job market, but there are only formal jobs for one in 10 of them. Without opportunities, the majority are forced into the informal sector. 55% of youths are estimated to be unemployed or underemployed. The situation is a ticking time bomb as frustrated young men and women are vulnerable to drugs, prostitution, political manipulation, or even terrorism. 60% will accept bribes to vote. A third believe corruption is profitable. So if there is such a crisis of integrity, Perhaps the first place to investigate is the school system. Enrollment numbers for primary education are now officially at 100% thanks to the proliferation of low-cost private schools. But what is the quality of teaching like? To find out, I've contacted Dignitas, the trains and coaches educators, to transform their schools into vibrant places of learning. They've arranged for me to visit a primary school in the Kawangari slum. We are given to Moses by. Very good, clap for her. You know, the moment you give them a clear foundation, the moment they see school is not all about punishment and all other things, they view that maybe I can go even next level. Why you believe that the youth crisis in Kenya needs to be solved already in primary school. Primary school is a good time because it's setting the foundation. If you have a student who's confident, students who really believe that they can achieve different goals, they already have that you know, embedded in them, it really just makes their learning almost exciting as they transition through high school and even through college. But what will happen when these children leave school? And what about those who will drop out of secondary school? What can be done to equip them to find work? I've come to one of the three Seed of Hope training centers run by Raising Futures Kenya to provide skills training as well as personal guidance, counseling and business support to out-of-school youths. This Tata Motor, the running pinion itself, is capable when it is energized. When it is? Energized. Trainer Jack believes that without skills, young people have a 10% chance of finding work. When they come out of here after training well, they have uh, oh, 50 to 60% of uh, success. I'm impressed by small vocational training programs, but I wonder just how many dressmakers and auto mechanics are really needed. What about teaching employability skills? You see, in class, they teach us theory. The teacher comes, you're given books and notes and notes. Then you get out there in the field, and it's so different. The field is reality. You don't know how to act in reality. You don't have the skills to tackle reality. I met a generation training program, which was designed by the management consultant McKinsey to give young people skills and coaching for entry-level jobs in retail and hospitality. I want you to bring me a shirt, I want a white shirt, yeah. extra large, uh -huh. a white shirt, extra. You can hear me, right? you understand English? <laughs> These young people will get entry-level jobs, but would they be better off going to college? All around Nairobi, I noticed dozens of signs for private technical colleges. Yet ironically, statistics show that the unemployment rate for youths with college education is twice as high as for those with just high school degrees. Here's an example. 
Frankie has a college degree in film and broadcasting, but couldn't find a job. So he went to work as a minibus conductor, 18 hours a day, seven days a week, with very low pay. I need to do something to, to sustain me, uh, to keep off bad company. Because if it went on like that, I'll end up pickpocketing uh, or killing for money. Would you discourage people from going to college because of your experience? Sincerely speaking, if anybody talked to me today and told me, like, go to school, I would ask to do what? <laughs> because personally, I didn't see anything that came out from my hard work in school. So if the formal sector only provides jobs for one in 10 young people, it seems that a solution to the youth crisis is to promote entrepreneurship. I'm gonna visit a training program for micro-entrepreneurs. Launched in 2011 with funding from the MasterCard Foundation, the CAP Youth Empowerment Institute now runs 37 centers throughout Kenya and has given 42,000 youths employability skills and life skills, such as financial literacy. To help me better understand the challenges faced by micro-entrepreneurs, the CAP students have simulated a marketplace. Most of these young people are buying items wholesale and reselling them by the unit, but some of them are producing items, such as Hilda, who hooks small rugs. Most of the youths who complete the CAP program report a greater sense of confidence and financial independence and have become real role models within their communities. Nevertheless, 40% of their ventures will fail and most have little hope of growing their businesses beyond employing themselves. So what more can be done to take small businesses up to the next level so they can create jobs? I'm going to check out Ongosa, an organization that sees itself at the nexus between skills, connections, and capital necessary for high potential youths to become successful entrepreneurs, so they in turn can provide employment to their peers. So Alexi, what is it that makes Ongosa different and special? Well, most business education is delivered via a classroom, while Ongosa offers one-on-one -on -one problem solving in real time. Research shows that 90% of new information is lost within just one week. And so Ongoza is shifting the business education paradigm from just-in-case education, here's information you might need eventually, to just-in-time education, here's what you need right now. And how is this solving the youth employment crisis in Kenya? Ultimately, what the Kenyan economy needs is a structural transformation that will be born on the backs of small and medium enterprises rather than a bunch of people employing themselves. So Ongoza is helping create and drive entrepreneurs' success to create jobs for other people. Joe Maburi runs a film production company that grew from two to 11 employees during his year with Ongoza. Here he is meeting with his coach. And then start looking into market strategy. So if we do think it's a viable product, what should it look like? How do we get it to market, right? I can't end my investigation into youth empowerment without looking at what other major actors are doing. Now that basic education goals have been achieved, the Kenyan government and large international organizations are beginning to focus on youths. In the corporate sector, some companies have their own youth initiatives, like the huge mobile service provider Safaricom, which runs programs to empower young people to choose their own path to success through inspirational talks and mentorship summits. I met one of their youth ambassadors, David, who runs his fashion business under the Avido label from the Kibera slum. David, do you feel that your motivational speaking for the Blaze campaign for Safaricom is really having an impact? Yeah, it's really having a big impact by me telling like my story to the youth around Kenya. During my time, nobody used to believe in us. Nobody can do anything in life unless they believe in something. The large number of young Kenyans could be a force for a positive economic future if the challenges we have studied are overcome. So if you wanted to make a difference to youth empowerment, which approach would you support?